Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am the medical author of the book Focused Neurology as well as Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very important concept the muscle stretch reflexes or the tendon reflexes. Concepts of motor system part 5 the muscle stretch reflexes or tendon reflexes. Yeah, the muscle stretch reflexes they are usually increased with upper motor neuron lesions but may be decreased or absent for a variable period immediately after onset of an acute lesion. The hyperreflexia is usually accompanied by loss of cutaneous reflexes that is superficial abdominals and by an extensor plantar response that is Babinski sign. So in a UMN lesion there is hyperreflexia with loss of cutaneous reflexes the superficial abdominal reflexes and by an extensor plantar response or Babinski sign. The muscle stretch reflexes are depressed with lower motor neuron lesions directly involving the specific reflex arcs. They are generally preserved in patients with myopathic weakness except in advanced stages when they are sometimes decreased. So in myopathy the reflexes are usually preserved until in the advanced stage. But very interesting is about the neuromuscular junction disease. It could be postsynaptic disorder like myasthenia gravis or a presynaptic disorder like Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome. So the manifestation of these reflexes varies with the presynaptic disorder like Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome and postsynaptic disorder like myasthenia gravis. Let's see what happens in disorders of neuromuscular junction. In disorders of neuromuscular junction, Reflex responses may be affected by the preceding voluntary activity of affected muscles. Such activity may lead to enhancement of initially depressed reflex in Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome. So, in Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome, due to repeated activity, there is release of calcium which allows the reflexes to get enhanced. So, with repeated activity in a presynaptic disorder like Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome, due to release of calcium, the reflexes become increased with each succeeding action. So, activity may lead to enhancement of initially depressed reflexes and Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome. So, very interesting when a person elicit, elicits reflexes initially in Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome, the reflexes may be absent. But with repeated activity when he tries to elicit it again and again the reflexes slowly becomes manifest to the extent of becoming brisk also because with repeated activity there is release of calcium so in lambert eaton syndrome repeated activity may lead to enhancement of initially depressed reflexes but what happens in myasthenia gravis which is a post synaptic disorder with repeated activity the reflexes become lesser and lesser so in conversely due to depression of initially normal reflexes as in myasthenia gravis so activity may lead to enhancement of initially depressed reflexes in Lambert Eaton myasthenic syndrome and conversely to depression of initially normal reflexes as in myasthenia gravis so in myasthenia gravis it's a post synaptic disorder initially the reflexes may be normal but with the repeated activity the reflexes become decreased and depressed. The other clinical manifestation what we can elicit in myasthenia gravis is easy fatigability with repeated activity the muscle there is a fatigability of muscles. The other example is a person chewing uh, say a hard meat initially he will be able to chew the hard meat but with repeated activity he may be even find it difficult even to bite the meat with repeated activity very characteristic of myasthenia gravis easy fatigability 
So in disorders of neuromuscular junction, the reflexes may be affected by preceding voluntary activity of affected muscles. Such activity may lead to enhancement of initially depressed reflexes in lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome and conversely to depression of initially normal reflexes as in myasthenia gravis. Yeah, neuropathic versus myopathic weakness. Distal weakness is likely to be neuropathic and symmetric proximal weakness is likely to be myopathic. Fasciculation, that is the visible twitches within a muscle due to spontaneous discharge of a motor unit and early atrophy indicate that the weakness is neuropathic. So these are all the important uh, concepts of uh, muscle stretch reflexes or tendon reflexes. The other important concepts of clinical neurology like history taking, general examination, neurologic examination, hemiplegia and paraplegia. I have put all these concepts in a book called Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology written by me Dr. S. Srinivas. If interested this book could be purchased. The other important concepts of neurology I put it in a question and answer format in a book Focused Neurology written by me Dr. S. Srinivas. This book is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. So if interested this book could be purchased. So I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture on the muscle stretch reflexes or tendon reflexes. If you have liked it, please share the link. But please subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.